the time. This is 1010 Wins. You give us 22 minutes, we'll give you the world. Breaking news now on 1010 Wins. Darkness falls on a day of horror in the nation's history, a day that some are comparing to the 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor. This is what it sounded like this morning on 1010 Wins. It is not a good morning in New York City. Oh, my God! Which wish oh building? Oh, my God, the South Building does. The South Building just crumbled from the top. Oh, my God. First one plane crashing into the World Trade Center, then uh, a second crashing into the second tower. Is that the building going down? Is that the second building of the World Trade Center going yes, down? Yes, that is the second, oh, that is the second the tower. Just, that is the second tower. Down. It's a, a huge plume of smoke that came out of the middle of the building, and then the building just disappeared in the smoke. Manhattan is a virtual ghost town tonight, once busy streets and barren of traffic. You're listening to continuous team coverage on 1010 Winds of the terrorist attack on America. The attack today had a tremendous impact on traffic, transit, travel in our area. With the latest, we go to shadow traffic and Jude Tamillo. Catherine on the George Washington Bridge and view on the jam cam. The outbound upper level has three lanes getting by. The lower deck is closed. Closures in both directions still through the Holland and the Lincoln Tunnels. Westbound Cross Bronx swamp with traffic approaching the George Washington Bridge. We have closures of the southbound Van Wick from the Grand Central down to the Nassau Expressway. The westbound Belt Parkway has been closed off at Kennedy Airport. Traffic being put on the service road. And the westbound Long Island Expressway shut down from the Douglaston Parkway to the Midtown Tunnel. The Midtown Tunnel and 59th Street Bridge closed into Manhattan, open into Queens. Still closures both ways inside the Battery Tunnel, but also the Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Williamsburg Bridges shut down both ways. In New Jersey, the northbound car and truck lanes of the Jersey Turnpike closed north of Exit 11. The Garden State Parkway is open but no access to the turnpike at exit 129. And as we check mass transit for you from the 1010 Winds Transit Desk, Metro North operating on a Saturday schedule both ways. They will resume normal service tomorrow. Long Island Railroad now with full service in both directions. New Jersey Transit operating out of Penn Station on a load-and-go basis. And all national air traffic suspended through at least 12 noon tomorrow afternoon. I'm Jude Tamillo, shadow traffic on 1010 Winds. Two planes hijacked by terrorists slammed into the World Trade Center. Another crashed into the Pentagon, hitting the heart of the nation financial system and the nation's military command center. Focus remains on the base of the tremendous plume of smoke rising from what used to be the world's two of the world's tallest buildings. Two hijacked airliners smashed into the Twin Towers, causing the 110-story structures to crumble like a house of cards. Untold hundreds, if not thousands, may have been killed. At the command center tonight is 1010 Winds reporter Glenn Schock. Well, good evening. The mayor, Catherine, expected to hold another briefing here shortly. We're told probably in the next 30 minutes, but we still don't expect any numbers as to casualties from the horrific scene here in lower Manhattan. Thousands of rescuers are still frantically going through that rubble as the mayor huddles here with his top aides and the FBI and the governor's office as well. The mayor's office will not yet confirm either the fatalities to the police and fire crews either. Here is a distraught Mayor Giuliani about an hour ago. I feel terrible for the people that, that we lost, some of whom I talked to just 15 minutes before we lost them, and uh, the city is going to survive. We're going to get through it. It's going to be a very, very difficult time. Uh, I, I, I don't think we yet know the pain that we're going to feel when we find out who we lost. The mayor is asking New Yorkers to stay home tomorrow if at all possible. He's asking for blood donations for the thousands of people that have been injured. Both the governor and mayor say they're confident that President Bush will act swiftly now to strike back against these terrorist groups responsible. And before I go, I want to mention again, the mayor's office has asked us to put out this number again for any medical personnel that can volunteer their services, doctor, EMT, or nurse. Here's the toll-free number, 1-800-628-0193. Again, we're expecting the mayor to brief us again shortly. Glenn Shock, 1010 Winds, live in lower Manhattan. Catherine? All of New York City's hospitals have been pressed into service at St. Vincent's Hospital. 1010 Winds reporter Terry Sheridan. We've lost Terry for the moment. Let's see if we can get him back in the meantime. Building 7 at the World Trade Center caught fire after the Twin Towers collapsed. Building 7 has now collapsed as well. 1010 Winds reporter Al Jones was on the scene. The world's largest office complex now reduced to a pile of rubble, changing lives forever. Eugene Foti was at work inside One World Trade Center and says he ran for his life. Now, he's mad. To me, I'm like, if I'm George Bush, 
all war. I mean, I know these, these guys, are, you know, this, this is a holy war. They're, they're not afraid to die, but, you know, you got to you gotta put these guys out of the misery. One way or another, this is incredible. You can't, you can't stand for this in the United States. And while some share Fody's anger, many are just in a state of shock, scared that what was once unthinkable happened twice. Al Jones, 10-10 wins in lower Manhattan. Wins News Time 905. Terry Sheridan is back with us now from St. Vincent's Hospital. What can you tell us, Terry? Well, Catherine, in the past three hours, there's maybe only been two or three ambulances that have dropped off any of the injured. Uh, the last one was probably about 20 minutes ago, and into it jumped more doctors or uh, medical personnel, some of which you were wearing biohazard suits as they sped down 7th Avenue back to the scene. St. Vincent's Hospital has asked that if you are a medical professional and we're going to volunteer tonight, not tonight. They have more than enough doctors here, but tomorrow morning when these doctors need to be relieved, that's the time that they're going to need you. Now, again, it's very eerie here. On the rate of one ambulance coming in, perhaps per hour, the doctors across the street are just knowing about the ambulances and gur or the gurneys and the stretchers and the wheelchairs are, are all set. They're, they're just waiting for patients. The priests and the members of the clergy are still here as well. So, again, we've maybe seen 20 people uh, come in in the past three hours. The last official number that we have is 319 uh, are being treated here, 55 in critical condition, 45 of the injured are members of either the police or fire department, and as much as we've had much of the afternoon, three people are uh, dead on arrival here at St. Vincent's. I'm Terry Sheridan, 1010 wins at St. Oh. Vincent's Hospital. And we can expect that death toll to rise as the night goes on. We still have, of course, no way of knowing how many people were killed in today's attack. On any given day, 50,000 people are working in the Twin Towers and their surrounding buildings. Mayor Giuliani says some of the missing are the first police and firefighters who arrived on the scene. The vice president of the Firefighters Union says half of the 400 firefighters who first reached the scene may be dead. Of course, Cardinal Edward Egan, who administered last rites to a dozen victims, said the firefighters and police were dead in great numbers. Those are the cardinal's words. A police source speaking on condition of anonymity says 78 police officers were missing. Again, there is no official confirmation of any of these numbers. Emergency medical service worker Luis Garcia said initial reports indicated that bodies were buried beneath the two feet of soot on streets around the World Trade Center. And there is an urgent need for blood. Let me make this clear. Your blood is desperately needed, just not now. The people at the American Red Cross Blood Center say if you're a negative blood type or O positive, you can show up at West 67th in Amsterdam at 8 a.m. Other blood types will be taken later. Volunteer Bonnie Long. We need volunteers of any kind, social workers, construction, uh, clerical, anything. We need you desperately. Drivers. You can stop by any time to pick up an application. Bottle of 1010 wins at Amsterdam Avenue and West 67th Street. Winds News Time 908. President Bush addressed the nation a short while ago. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. Mr. Bush said, a great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist acts can shake foundations of building, but cannot shake the American resolve. Mr. Bush implemented emergency response plans. His first priority, to help the injured and to protect citizens in this country and around the world from further attacks. Financial institutions, he said, remain strong. He directed full resources of intelligence communities to find those responsible and to bring them to justice. The Pentagon is functioning. That from Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld after a plane crashed into the wing of the Pentagon, causing part of the building to collapse. About 100 people are believed to have been killed or injured in today's attack. Law enforcement officials say the nation's military headquarters was hit by American Airlines Flight 77. It was seized while carrying 64 people from Washington to Boston. The federal buildings in Washington were evacuated. President Bush, who was in Florida, was diverted to a military base in the Midwest for precautions. He has since returned to Washington. The nation's top military officer won't discuss what options the U.S has in response to today's terrorist attacks. But he says, make no mistake about it, your armed forces are ready. They were the comments of General Hugh Shelton, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. 
came at the Pentagon, even as crews elsewhere in the building worked to help survivors and recover victims from the plane crash there. So whose deadly work was this? We don't know. No one has claimed responsibility. But a high-ranking military official told the Associated Press they suspect this is the work of Osama bin Laden. The Saudi terrorist is a vowed hater of the United States. He's believed to be behind the bombing of the U.S. embassies in Africa and the attack on the USS Cole. In Afghanistan, a spokesman for the hardline Taliban rulers denied that bin Laden had any role. But a London-based Arab journalist said followers of bin Laden warned three weeks ago they would carry out a huge and unprecedented attack on U.S. interests. President Bush ordered a full-scale investigation to hunt down the folks who committed these acts. Winds News Time 910. Again, the events of today had a tremendous impact on all New Yorkers and our ability to get around. We'll check in with Shadow's Jude Tamillo to find out how the situation is at this hour. Jude? Well, Catherine, right now as we take a look at Route 3 on the 1010 Winds Jam Cam, we're still closed in the westbound direction near the Meadowlands Parkway in Secaucus. We have an accident and a hazardous material investigation now taking place in this area. The eastbound side of 3 is shut down at Route 21 in Clifton. Traffic is jam-packed from the closure at 21 to the closure at the New Jersey Turnpike on the George Washington Bridge. Three lanes available on the outbound upper level. The lower deck remains closed. Holland and Lincoln Tunnel still shut down in both directions. If you're coming out of Nassau County into Queens, do not use the Long Island Expressway that is closed westbound from the Douglaston Parkway out to the Midtown Tunnel. The Southern State and the Northern State both open into Queens at this time. Closures of the westbound Belt Parkway at Kennedy Airport have to use the service road. Southbound Van Wick shut down from the Grand Central down to the Nassau Expressway. And closures in both directions still at the Battery Tunnel, the Brooklyn, Manhattan and Williamsburg bridges. We have trebles in New Jersey, northbound 440 closed in Perth Amboy. And also eastbound 80s express lanes are closed from exit 62 onto the George Washington Bridge. Local lanes closed at 95 and Fort Lee. Tap and Z Bridge looking good both ways. As from the Tent and Winds Transit Desk, we find Metro North operating on a Saturday schedule both ways. They'll resume normal service tomorrow. Long Island Railroad now resuming full service in both directions. New Jersey Transit operating out of Penn Station on a load-and-go basis. National air traffic suspended till at least 12 noon tomorrow. And Jude Tamillo, shadow traffic on 1010 Winds. At least some of the commuter lines are starting to come back, and that is good news, and some subway lines as well. Winds News Time 912. Shortly after 7 o'clock tonight, crews began heading into ground zero of the terrorist attack to search for survivors and recover bodies. All that remained of the Twin Towers by then was a pile of rubble and twisted steel that stood barely two stories high. Remember, 110-story buildings, now two stories high leaving a huge gap in New York City's skyline. In Lower Manhattan at this hour is 1010 Winds reporter Eileen LaPalmer. What can you tell us, Eileen? Well, Catherine, I'm right on Church Street, about a block north of Chamber Street. I'm standing in utter darkness, the only light uh, from the media trucks and a couple of construction crews who are out, and they have some spotlights. Heading out of the rubble right now are several police officers and firefighters who are looking for a break. They are rather shell-shocked. They're standing about 10 feet from me, and I can literally smell the smoke emanating from their uniform. They tell me that um, 7 World Trade Center, which is the building that collapsed hours after the first two, is on its side. The construction crews are in there trying to move, remove the rubble so that emergency crews can continue to get through and more construction crews can get through. Uh, another officer, he's a veteran officer. He seems shaken. He has an eye injury. He says he's never seen anything like this. He says uh, there are just bodies everywhere down there still. He's not sure at what point they're going to continue the search and rescue. Um, right now, bulldozers, as I said, just cleaning away the rubble, the mountains of rubble, which continue uh, to billow up smoke at this area. Eileen LaCombe, 1010 Winds, live on Church Street in Lower Manhattan. Winds News Time, 914. You're listening to continuous coverage on 1010 Winds of the terrorist attack on America. We now have a long list of phone numbers for you to call if you have questions about loved ones, about offering medical services, anything like that. Please be prepared to remember some of these numbers. Write them down if you need to. To donate blood, you can call the New York Blood Center at 1-800-933-BLOOD. The Red Cross is 1-800-HELP-NOW. A general number is 1-888-BLOOD-88. The New York Health and Hospital Services issued an 800 number for blood donations at 1-800-933-2566. 
The Greenville Hospital in Jersey City is 201-546-6106. Meadowlands Hospital in Secaucus, 201-392-3269. In Suffolk County, you can donate blood by calling 516-478-5116. Nassau County University Medical Center's number is 516 make that 572-6348. The visiting nurse service of New York staff should report to their regional offices or call 1-800-VNS-5737. Deloitte and Touche for employees, relatives to call for information is 1-888-243-7666. St. Vincent's to find loved ones, the number 604 604- 7285. AON Survivor Hotline 1 866 256 4154. Euro Brokers Hotline 317 1000. Morgan Stanley 888 883 4391. People searching for miss, missing loved ones. The New York Bureau of Laboratories is 212 447 2998. The National Victims Hotline number is 1-800-331-0075. And tips on the attacks, you can call www.ifcc. Make this, you're, you're logging on. It's www.ifccfbi.gov. That's www.ifccfbi.gov. Wins News Time, 1-9-16. Some of the workers at the Twin Towers leaped to their deaths. Mayor Giuliani saw that happen. He said it was a horrifying sight. City officials had opened now a morgue in the area to handle the bodies buried in the rubble once the search and rescue teams moved in. Hospital officials are preparing for the worst once the rescue workers start going through that rubble. Some of those injured were taken to New Jersey. The Jersey City Medical Center is a level two trauma center and of course was called upon in the aftermath of the tragedy at the World Trade Center to take care of some of the wounded. 143 people were seen, 21 of them admitted, all came by ferry across the Hudson and then were taken by ambulance to the facility where the auditorium became the minor injury treatment room and the library was turned into kind of a center for the less wounded who could talk and meet with counselors and the director of social work and case management said that some New York City cops and firefighters who weren't physically injured but were clearly traumatized have been receiving counseling. The facility went on code one alert and that's for external disasters. At one point during the day, 20 ambulances from around the area went back into New York City to try and bring patients or the wounded back across the Hudson but they were not able to get close to the site of the tragedy. Sandy Klein, 1010 Winds News at the Jersey City Medical Center. Again, we still have no way of knowing how many people were killed in today's attack on the World Trade Center. But how about the people on board those four hijacked airplanes? The two that crashed into the Twin Towers, the one that hit the Pentagon, the one that crashed into western Pennsylvania. The two American Airlines flights and the two United Airliners carried a total of 266 people. That death toll alone surpasses the 168 people killed in the Oklahoma City bombing. One of those flights was United Airlines Flight 93 from Newark to San Francisco. It crashed southeast of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Two other flights from Boston were involved. An American Airlines flight headed to Los Angeles and United to L.A. It's believed those two crashed into the Twin Towers. Wins News Time 918. Now, what parents and students want to know. All New York City public schools are closed tomorrow. All Catholic schools in the New York Archdiocese are closed tomorrow. And many other schools have canceled classes as well. New York City schools will not reopen until at least Thursday to give principals and staff members time to develop grief counseling and crisis intervention teams. Kids who lost someone in the tragedy or were traumatized will have a chance to talk about it with trained counselors when they come back. Tevin Taylor, a nine-year-old whose school in Brooklyn is not far from the Twin Towers, saw smoke filling his classroom, waited four hours for his mom to come and get him. And was he glad to see her? When I saw her, I cheered, and then I went to um, my mother. I hugged her, <laughs> and then I hugged her. And you hug him? Oh, yeah, I gave him a big hug and kiss, squeeze his ears like I normally do. <laughs> So it was a good really it was a really now with a day off, schools are urging parents to talk with their kids about this tragedy. Mona Rivera, ten ten wins news.
Chancellor Levy has asked principals and assistant principals, guidance counselors, social workers, psychologists, and crisis teams all to report to schools tomorrow to prepare plans to respond to the tragedy. The work will include coordinating crisis intervention, arranging for grief counseling and support services for students and staff. Once again, all New York City public schools, all archdiocese and schools are closed tomorrow. Winds News Time, 920. Is now on 1010 Winds. 12 hours after the fact now. The first word came 9 o'clock this morning. A plane had struck one of the Twin Towers at the World Trade Center. Next, an explosion. Minutes later, a second plane hitting the other tower. And an hour after that, both towers crumbling to the ground. Night has fallen across Manhattan. The smoke perhaps will clear during the night. And then for the day ahead, perhaps we'll learn more about casualties. The number one question on everyone's mind. In the meantime, the Twin Towers, they're gone from the skyline. All that remains is their smoldering base structure. Debris rained about for blocks and blocks, soot and ash in some spots two feet deep. Witnesses at the time of the explosions heard here. Yeah, it caught an explosion and uh, just got consumed by the smoke and the debris. And it turned everything like night over there. You couldn't see where you were going. So lots of smoke, and then the next thing I heard an explosion, and the building from the top, the south building, just crumbled. Everything just went black. Everything came down, glass are popping, and people got hurt. Church Street was a, a looked like a war zone. I'm about a block away, and there were several people that were hanging out the windows right below where the plane crashed, when suddenly you saw the top of the building start to shake, and people began leaping from the windows. It was a terrible nightmare. And the nightmare, unfortunately, continues. We're going to try to bring you up to speed on how to get around and about Manhattan in the upper boroughs. Joining us now, Jude Tamillo in the traffic center. Jude. And, Greg, right now as we spot some problems currently on the jam cam, the westbound side of Route 3 has been closed down at Meadowlands Parkway in Secaucus with a police investigation. The eastbound side of 3 is also shut down at Route 21 in Clifton, and traffic remains jam-packed from the closure onto the New Jersey Turnpike. As for the turnpike itself, the northbound car and truck lanes are roped off north of Exit 11. The Gardens State Parkway is open, but there is no access from the uh, parkway to the uh, turnpike at exit 129. Uh, the George Washington Bridge along the outbound upper deck. We have three lanes getting by. The lower deck remains closed. Minor delays right now as we uh, take a look at the uh, outbound upper level. Holland and Lincoln tunnels still closed in both directions. We have northbound 440 shut down in the Perth Amboy area. A closure of the Staten Island bound Gobbles, Bayonne and Outer Bridge crossing. And coming back into Queens from Nassau County, do not use the Long Island Expressway. That is closed westbound from the Douglaston Parkway out to the Midtown Tunnel. As for the 1010 uh, Winds Transit Desk, Metro North operating on a Saturday schedule both ways. We'll resume normal service tomorrow. Long Island Railroad full service both ways. And New Jersey Transit operating out of Penn Station on a load and go basis. National air traffic suspended until at least 12 noon tomorrow afternoon. I'm Jude Tamillo, shadow traffic on 1010 Winds. Keep it locked into 1010 Winds. We will be updating the traffic and transit situation every 10 minutes as usual on the ones. Winds News Time 923. Joining us now live in the news line 1010. And wins reporter Lisa Evers from Lower Manhattan. Lisa, where are you? What can you tell us? And what, I, what I can tell you, I'm at Greenwich Street and Harrison Street, and this is a scene where a lot of the rescue efforts are, uh, un the people who are involved in the rescue efforts are coming out of the World Trade Center. I just spoke with several firefighters who walked out from there, and they said what they hit, what they say is that the fire, there's still fires going on. The devastation is just be. Lisa? Problem with transmission. Apparently, we have lost Lisa for the moment. She's denoting how she notices all the emergency personnel around and about. Below 14th Street, a mandatory evacuation ordered for all commercial buildings. We have learned that some residents are being allowed back in. Lock it in to 10 wins for further details. Mayor Giuliani, in regard to tomorrow, says if you do not have to be in the city, please stay home. 14th Street North in Manhattan will be open, but it's going to be very crowded. And it's going to be uh, a complex and difficult day. So if today is a, if tomorrow is the day you can take off, it probably would be a good thing to stay home. Now, some are fearing that the death toll is nowhere near yet realized here. As it stands, at last count, 2,100 people injured, 1,500 what are described as walking wounded, taken some to New Jersey, others to Brooklyn. 600 others brought to hospitals in midtown Manhattan. 150 critical conditions could take weeks to dig through rubble for victims. Only now, as of 7 o'clock, two and a half hours ago, crews are beginning to sift through the rubble at the base of what were World Trade Center towers. 
Still, it's a slow go. The fires are still smoldering. How did this all start? Well, the Trade Center towers apparently pierced by two L.A.-bound jetliners have been hijacked after taking off from Boston about 15 minutes apart early this morning. First, it was American Flight 11, 92 people on board. Then United Flight 175, 65 people on board. As it stands, outbound travel in the city is still possible. However, bridges and tunnels do remain closed in spots and subject to further closure. Getting uh, out of Manhattan is slow, but getting in is still very difficult, excepting, of course, police and fire personnel with proper credentials. They're being let in. We will be taking a look at the traffic and transit situation every 10 minutes on the ones here. 10 10 winds throughout the night. Please keep tuned in to us. Within an hour after the attack on New York today, the Pentagon in Washington taking a direct devastating hit also. From a commercial airliner, fiery crash collapsed one side of the five-sided structure. Pentagon hit by American Flight 77, which was seized while carrying 64 people on board from Washington to L.A. And at least 100 people, the last estimate at the Pentagon itself, believed to have been killed. And in Pennsylvania, United Flight 93, that of Boeing 757, out of Newark to San Francisco, crashed about 80 miles southeast of the city, 45 people on board. The intended target of that plane, apparently, is believed to be Camp David, the presidential retreat about 85 miles off of the crash site. Now, the four planes carried a total of 266 people. There are believed to be no survivors, of course. President Bush addressing the nation earlier tonight, putting the military on its highest level of alert and, of course, condemning the attack. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. One admiral with the United States Navy stating we have been attacked like we have not since Pearl Harbor. Ships en route to New York right now. Also Washington, D.C. include carriers, amphibious ships, guided missile cruisers, guided missile destroyers capable of responding to threats from the air and sea. Now the amphibious ships carrying Marines and sailors providing security, surgical teams, and limited hospital bed capacity expected to help ease the load uh, felt right now by New York City hospitals. Around the country, firefighters, airborne radar, refueling planes, and scrambled, this according to Air National Guard spokesman at Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida. Aviation has been canceled coast to coast through at least noontime tomorrow. Newark, LaGuardia, JFK shut down. Last we heard from the Port Authority, they are set, at least at Newark, to reopen once clearance is given. And they call the, the facility, quote, secure. Now, New Yorkers with no air travel allowed, they may be wondering what is that occasional roar of the jet overhead military aircraft, U.S. fighter jets, presumably on a precautionary patrol over the entire metro area. More from President Bush speaking from the Oval Office about today's terrorist attacks. The president says our way of life, our very freedom, came under attack. He says we were attacked because our country is a beacon of freedom. He says thousands of lives suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The images have filled us with disbelief, sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. And the disbelief is very much a part of this story as we move through the evening ahead. Of course, it is dark now. You look to the south, to the earlier plume of smoke where the World Trade Center Twin Towers stood. Cannot be seen. The streets are quiet on up through midtown Manhattan. You can even hear the wind blowing, which is a very rare occurrence in midtown Manhattan. City streets are deserted. Police presence is notable at corners around town. There is bus service here and there. Bus service, by the way, continues in the outer boroughs in Manhattan. Anything below 14th Street is primarily off limits. Closings for Wednesday. New York City public and parochial schools will be closed. Major tourist attractions as well as follows. Empire State Building will be shut down. All business below 14th Street in Manhattan once again will be closed. That includes Wall Street. The financial markets are shut down for the day. Offering you now a list of phone numbers that may be helpful as you are concerned about loved ones, perhaps their whereabouts unaccounted for. American Airlines passenger information, 1-800-245-0999. 1-800-245-0999. United Airlines passenger information. 1-800-932-8555. one 800 The sound for blood donations has been sounded. 
The casualties are expected to increase. New York Blood Center, 1-800-933-BLOOD. 1-800-933-BLOOD. And to reach the Red Cross itself, 1-800-HELP-NOW. 1-800-HELP-NOW. New York Health and Hospital Services issuing an 800 number for blood donation as well. 1-800-933-2566. 1-800-933-2566. Nassau University Medical Center, the phone number, 516-572-6348. 516-572-6348. Visiting Nurse Service of New York staff should report to the regional offices or they can call 1-800-VNS-5737, 1-800-VNS-5737. Time at the tone you just heard, 930. You are tuned to 1010 Winds in New York. Dilwat and Touche were employees of the World Trade Center Tower. Relatives to call for information, 1-888-243-7666. St. Vincent's Hospital, if you're in search of loved ones, 604-7285 in Manhattan, 212-604-7285. Euro Brokers Hotline, also an occupant of the World Trade Towers, 317-1000, Manhattan Area, 317-1000, Morgan Stanley as well, 1-888-883-4391, 1-888-883-4391, and a last resort, a blanket number, people searching for missed loved ones, the New York City Bureau of Laboratories, as follows, 212-447-2998, 212-447-2998. Winds News Time, 931, taking another check now around and about town to see how we can get in, how we can get out. Jude Tamillo now from Shadow Traffic. Greg, let's check on some of these uh, East River crossings. We are open in both directions on the, both the Throngs Neck and the Whitestone Bridges, but still closed back into Manhattan via the Triborough Bridge. The Midtown Tunnel and the 59th Street Bridge are closed into Manhattan. They are open into Queens. We are still closed in both directions for the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, the Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Williamsburg Bridges. The southbound Van Wick is shut down from the Grand Central onto the Nassau Expressway. The westbound Belt Parkway closed off at Kennedy Airport traffic now using the service road. And coming back into Queens from Nassau County, do not use the LIE. Go with the northern or southern state parkways. The westbound LIE closed from the Douglaston Parkway straight out to the Queens Midtown Tunnel. Problems on the jam cam in New Jersey with a closure of Route 3 as we travel westbound in the Secaucus area near Meadowlands Parkway. An eastbound closure as well at Route 21 in Clifton. Hudson River crossings on the outbound upper deck of the George Washington Bridge. Three lanes get by. Very light traffic at this time. The lower deck is closed off still. Holland and Lincoln tunnels also closed in both directions. Now from the 1010 Winds Transit Desk. Subway service south of Canal Street is shut down. New Jersey Transit will operate out of Penn Station on a load-and-go basis. We have full service both ways on the Long Island Railroad. Metro North operating on a Saturday schedule both ways. They will resume normal service for tomorrow. And national air traffic remains suspended through at least 12 noon tomorrow afternoon. I'm Jude Tamillo, Shadow Traffic on 1010 Winds. Winds News Time now, 932. Joining us now live on the news line, 1010 Winds reporter Terry Sheridan. Terry's at St. Vincent's Hospital, Lower Manhattan, very close to the scene of the blast today. And Terry, St. Vincent's, as we understand it, working at or near full capacity? Uh, that they are, Greg. Uh, they are, I, I would say, over capacity. They have tons of doctors, tons of medical professions here. The problem is there are no patients. Uh, we have 319 uh, patients that were brought in earlier this evening. Out of those, 55 are in critical condition, 45 are members of the police and fire department, and uh, three at DOA. But we have not seen any ambulances come in probably in the past half hour, in the past three hours, perhaps maybe three or four ambulances. And those, more doctors, medical professionals, are jumping in and going down to the scene. St. Vincent's Hospital has asked that if you are our medical professional, uh, they don't need you to volunteer tonight. What they're going to need for you is to call tomorrow morning to relieve the doctors and the nurses who are here and uh, will be working overnight. Uh, they also said that they have two triage teams down at the site as well as six ambulance crews. Terry Sheridan, 1010 Wind, live at St. Vincent's Hospital. Terry, if I might keep you on the line for just a moment longer in our uh, in request to find out information here at the 1010 Winds oh. Newsroom. We also understand Lower Manhattan, St. Vincent's, and NYU Medical Center taking the brunt of the load and hospitals up here, St. Clair's and Midtown, even as far away as New Jersey, even Hartford, Connecticut facilities are on standby to take the overflow. One hospital spokeswoman was expressed concern, an eerie feeling, she said, that they are not seeing more injuries, lending perhaps a belief that people are either slightly injured or worse. Craig, you hit it on the head. Everyone here, whether it's doctors, whether it's the chaplains, whether it's the fellow reporters, the term is eerie because 
Um, it just is. There is nobody here except for the doctors. Media, there's not even family members here. I walked a block or two over to the new school where they sent up the family center. There's maybe two dozen people inside of that. Um, it is eerie. Terry, won't keep you any longer, and we will look forward to talking to you again in the next few minutes. Terry Sheridan at St. Vincent's Hospital, which, along with NYU Medical Center, bearing the brunt uh, this evening and all day long of walking wounded from the World Trade Center blast. The math in itself is eerie. 50,000 people on a given day work in the World Trade Center towers. It was just after 9 o'clock in the morning. The workday for most had begun. And the numbers that we have, a sum total of hospitals around the city, on the order of perhaps two to 3,000, and that is a liberal estimation of people coming in with various assorted, mainly minor wounds, perhaps under 200 listed as critical. And we're talking about two buildings that are completely demolished, where perhaps 50,000 people report to work every day. The story is by no means over, and much more information, perhaps information we'd rather not hear, will be coming out through the day ahead. First light tomorrow, perhaps some of the, the smoke and debris will clear, and rescue crews can get in and see what they're dealing with. That in itself will be a precarious task. Giving you now a little bit of a timeline in the attacks this day, which will be remembered for a very long time in the history of this nation. We will be turning it over 20 minutes to the hour to 1010 Winds anchor reporter Susan Richard. She will have information anew. Traffic and transit info, info and numbers for you to call. But here is that timeline to recap this day. 8.45 this morning, American Airlines Flight 11 carrying 92 people came out of Boston. It was to be bound for Los Angeles, but it crashed at 8.45 into the north tower of the World Trade Center. Three minutes past nine, United Airlines Flight 175 carrying 65 people from Boston to L.A. crashed into the south tower of the World Trade Center. President Bush at 9.30 this morning calling the crashes in a apparent terrorist attack on our country. At 9.40, American Airlines Flight 77, 64 people on board from Washington to L.A., crashes into the Pentagon. Trading on Wall Street at that point was called off. The Capitol and West Wing of the White House at 10 minutes to 10 this morning evacuated. Federal Aviation Administration barred aircraft takeoffs across the country at roughly the same time. International flights in progress sent to Canada. And at 10 minutes to 10 this morning, coming up now just on 12 hours later, one World Trade Center, that is the North Tower, completely collapsed. At 10.29, two World Trade Center, the South Tower, completely collapsed. 10.37 this morning, it's confirmed United Airlines Flight 93 en route to San Francisco from Newark crashed 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. None of the 45 people aboard believed to have survived that flight. It is believed its target was Camp David. 10 to 11.30 this morning, government buildings around the country evacuated. That include the Capitol and the White House. United Nations closed down on the east side of Manhattan. Securities and Exchange Commission closed all U.S. financial markets for the day. Tomorrow, too, Mayor Giuliani calling for the evacuation of lower Manhattan during that time. Droves of people seen walking dazed across the Brooklyn Bridge to safety. Matter of fact, Brooklyn Hospital on DeKalb Avenue absorbing quite a great number of those people as they moved that way. Some not even aware that they were injured until they got a great distance from lower Manhattan, wandering into the hospital with various wounds. About 1.20 this afternoon, President Bush left Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana for a secure, undisclosed location, later found to be a spot in Nebraska. Later this evening, he returned to the White House and at 8.30 addressed the nation, promising to find who is responsible and not withdrawing any sympathy for those who harbor those who are responsible. Later this evening at 525, number 7 World Trade Center collapsed. That is a 47-story building close to the towers. It had been evacuated, but it indeed collapsed. Partial list of New York City closings. In response, subway lines were suspended due to power problems. Service restored this afternoon. A, B, D, E, F, G, J, L, M, N, Q, R, W lines. And the numbers 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9. And the 42nd Street shuttle. No service on the C line, the Q, Express, and the 3 line. Bus service is normal in all boroughs outside Manhattan. As a matter of fact, even in upper Manhattan, north of Harlem today, heading into the city, life seemed to move on as usual. One person described it as after the bombing at Pearl Harbor. Life continued. It was, uh, it was an island away what happened downtown. Limited path train service to New Jersey. 
Just about everything in town is closed. Broadway shows for tonight, and they have canceled their matinees tomorrow as well. New York Stock Exchange, once again, do not expect any trading action tomorrow. And New York City's schools are closed. 75 degrees is the temperature in New York. We do have a clear sky. It is eerily, eerily quiet out on the streets. What we can tell you about the weather forecast is not of great concern, considering the day's tragedy. However, for the days to come, we can tell you that the city at least will have some clear weather, no rainfall on the horizon so workers can affect rescue efforts in downtown at the World Trade Center. Winds news time now, coming up on 940. Keep it locked to 1010 Winds, the very latest information. I'm Greg Jensen. Breaking news now on 1010 Winds. President Bush says terrorists can shake the foundation of our buildings, but they cannot shake the foundation of America. Good evening. I'm Susan Richard. You are listening to continuous live team coverage on 1010 Winds of the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, the worst attacks in United States history. Here's what it sounded like this morning on 1010 Winds. It is not a good morning in New York City. Oh, my God, the building fell. Are you there? The building just fell. Which wish? Oh, my God. The South Building just crumbled from the top. Oh, my God. First one plane crashing into the World Trade Center, then uh, a second crashing into the second tower. Is that the building going down? Is that the second building of the World Trade Center going down? Yes, that is the second tower. That is the second tower. That is the second tower. It's a huge pool of smoke that came out of the middle of the building, and then the building just disappeared in the smoke. To recap, shortly before 9 o'clock this morning, two hijacked airplanes with passengers on board crashed into both of the World Trade Center towers within minutes of each other. About an hour later, the South Tower crashed to the ground, and then at about 10.30, the North Tower collapsed. At this point, we have no idea how many people were killed in today's day of terror in the city. Rescue crews are just now beginning to get into the area of rubble, smoke, soot, and the fear of additional building collapses made it too dangerous earlier. Winds News time at 9.41. We are trying to keep you updated on the travel situation which has been a big deal in the city. Most people were seen walking home from Manhattan today. Thousands crossing bridges on foot. Let's get the very latest on that situation from 1010 Wind Shadow Traffic and Jude Tamillo. Well, Susan, right now from the 1010 Winds Jam Cam, we can see some problems on Route 3. The eastbound side is shut down at Route 21 in Clifton. Traffic jam back from that closure at 21 to the closure at the New Jersey Turnpike. The westbound side of 3 is shut down at Meadowlands Parkway in Secaucus due to another police investigation. As for the George Washington Bridge, the outbound upper level with three lanes getting by, the lower deck is closed off. Holland and Lincoln Tunnel still closed in both directions. We have closures of the Brooklyn-bound upper deck of the Verrazano Bridge. We also have the Staten Island-bound Goblins Bridge, Bayonne Bridge and Outer Bridge Crossing closed for construction. Northbound 440 closed in the Perth Amboy area. As for the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel and Brooklyn Bridge closed both ways. The Brooklyn-bound Williamsburg and Manhattan Bridges closed to vehicles, but open to pedestrians at this time, as Susan was uh, inferring, and we also are closed on the Manhattan-bound side of the uh, Williamsburg Bridge and Manhattan Bridges. As for mass transit, subway service south of Canal Street is shut down. New Jersey Transit will operate out of Penn Station on a load-and-go basis, limited path service to New Jersey at this time. Long Island Railroad full service both ways. Metro North operating on a Saturday schedule both ways. It will resume a normal schedule for tomorrow. National air traffic suspended to at least 12 noon tomorrow. And you to Mello, shadow traffic on 1010 Wind. And we'll do 1010 wind shadow traffic like we always do every 10 minutes on the ones. Within hours of the attacks this morning, Lower Manhattan looked like a ghost town, and it was even described as a war zone with a thick coating of soot and plumes of smoke all over. Let's get the very latest now. 1010 winds reporter Steve Kastenbaum joins us live. Steve. Well, uh, this morning, the only words that come to mind uh, when describing the scene in Lower Manhattan were nuclear winter. Anything and everything below Chamber Street was covered in a thick blanket of gray debris and soot, as well as papers and other sort of office matter that came out of the buildings, uh, the World Trade Center buildings, when they collapsed. I was told by police officers that came in from Brooklyn that papers had uh, drifted and floated as far southeast as Coney Island. All this coming from the buildings before and after the collapse of uh, World Trade Center's towers that are no longer there. 
it's just incomprehensible the amount of devastation that you see when you walk through lower Manhattan. Hour after hour after hour, we saw the people coming out, their faces covered, some wrapped in bandages. We saw exhausted uh, emergency rescue personnel coming out covered in head to toe in this gray soot. And uh, amongst them were some sanitation workers who were uh, down at the scene within moments after the first plane crash. And one of the most horrible stories in this terrible tragedy is the one that they are telling and so many others are as well. When the plane first hit the building, there was just like 30, 40 bodies just flying out of the plane, out of the side of the building, just tumbling down to the bottom. You could see this happening. Yes, you could. It was incredible. It was ridiculous. And later on, you guys told me you saw every once in a while you'd look up at the building and a burning body would, would fall out or jump. Well, after the first plane hit the building, the fire started reaching upwards. And uh, after about 10 minutes, I'd say people in desperation were hopping out the windows. I guess they'd rather go down that way than die in the flames. And that story, again, is being recanted by so many people uh, throughout the city right now. Uh, the fires are still most definitely burning out of control. The smoke plumes are making their way over into downtown Brooklyn, where I am right now. I can see the smoke, uh, the, the most terrible sight I could ever imagine is when I looked over my shoulder walking back home to Brooklyn over the Brooklyn Bridge, saw the smoke coming from Lower Manhattan, saw, saw most of Lower Manhattan blacked out and missing from that skyline to two towers at the World Trade Center. I thought once I got home, I would be able to uh, to calm down and, and get some time to digest the uh, enormity of what happened here. But once I arrived home, I learned, uh, sadly, that one of my neighbors did not come home, a neighbor who leaves for work every morning at 6 a.m. to go to work at her office on the 101st floor of one of the two towers. Steve Kastenbaum, 1010 Winds News. Steve, I bet that's going to be the case for a lot of people, that it seems unreal. It's almost like a bad movie, and then you get home, and you learn about somebody in your own life that is missing or whatever. How has that changed? You've been on the story all day. So how has that changed it for you? How are you feeling right now? I, I am I'm full of emotions right now, because this all began this morning when I was in my bedroom, and I have a view of lower Manhattan, and I felt the ground shake, and I heard my windows rumble, and I ran to the window, and there I saw the most unbelievable sight, one of the World Trade Center towers on fire. And then I heard on 1010 Winds, uh, we were describing how a plane had crashed into the building. Moments later, I saw the fireball erupting from the second plane crashing into the building, and it was at that point that it had become apparent that this was an act of terrorism. But I, of course, went immediately into my reporter mode, and I ran across uh, my building parking lot, got out of my car, headed for the Brooklyn Bridge, couldn't get across. I jumped into a fire department car with a bunch of firemen. We sped across the bridge, and the second we got down to City Hall, I, I just stood there in disbelief and got out of the car because right there before my eyes, thousands of people running away from lower Manhattan as they, behind them, you saw the World Trade Center, one of the towers, just collapsing down into the ground. One second it was there, it was still standing, it was on fire, the next second, nothing. Then the second after that, an immense cloud of debris and dust and soot encompassed everything in the area. And then I spent the next couple of hours just talking to people and it distances you from such a tragedy like this when you're listening to the stories and when you're working. Then as I walked home and saw the skyline that I've grown to know and love my entire life not there anymore, it really began to sink in. And then my next instinct as soon as I got home was to ring my neighbor's bells and make sure everybody was okay. And uh, sadly, one of my neighbors told me the news just moments ago that uh, a very good friend of mine did, uh, so far has not returned home and we really just have no idea what has become of that person. Well, Steve, we will say a prayer for your friend and let's go live now to 1010 Winds reporter Lisa Evers, who is in Lower Manhattan. Lisa, what can you tell us from there? Well, I'm at uh, Greenwich and Harrison Streets, and this is the, the main route that a lot of the rescue efforts are, are underway. A lot of the rescuers, the ambulances, the firefighters coming down and going up this street as they leave from the scene of this disaster. I just spoke with a number of firefighters who were down there, and what they described, they were shaken, saying that it is beyond comprehension. It is just beyond description, and saying that there's rubble, there's just so much rubble, there's like four inches of, of this dust that looks like volcanic ash over everything, there's still some fire going on, lots and lots of smoke, which we can even see at this point, which is about four or five blocks away, and then I spoke with two EMTs who had taken a break, they've been working for nearly 12 hours straight trying to rescue people, this is Joe, he's one of these EMTs who's been valiantly trying to save lives. We were going into buildings, pulling people out in respiratory distress, people with asthma, and they were just banging on the ambulance. Please, get us out of here. We need to get out of here. And you want to help them, but you got to take the more acute first. People are seriously injured. 
And he says it's just been something unlike what he's ever imagined. He said as an EMT, his job is to save lives. That's what he enjoys doing about his work. He said today they went in going into this situation knowing that there would be it would be quite the opposite. He said there were bodies everywhere where there wasn't rubble. And he said they just they tried their best to get the people out, tried their best to get the people that were clinging to life to get help. And then a little bit down the road uh, where we are four or five blocks away from the scene, there's a, there's an entire uh, situation set up where there's a tagging method where they're categorizing and have been categorizing the people to try and get them help all throughout the day. So it's a massive, massive rescue effort underway. Firefighters also telling me that what they're trying to do is stabilize the situation because it's still very, very dangerous for these rescuers so that they can continue with those efforts to try and get anyone out who might still be alive. Lisa Evers, 1010 Winds, reporting live from Greenwich and Harrison Streets in Lower Manhattan. Winds News Time 950. Mayor Giuliani is urging people to stay home tomorrow if you don't need to come into the city. He says the city will be open, however, north of 14th Street. And the mayor says, don't act on any feelings of anger. We have a lot of people in the city of all different backgrounds and all diverse religions and they're not responsible for this. Whoever is responsible for this came from outside the city of New York. I'm sure the United States government will figure out who it is, and I'm sure we'll make an example out of them, as we should. But that should be left to the law enforcement authorities like the police and the FBI, the military, and not to the people of the city. Mayor Giuliani was actually in Midtown when the attacks began. He then went down to Lower Manhattan and he was there when towers came crashing down. The mayor said he and other city officials were actually stuck in a building for about 10 to 15 minutes before they were led to safety. You're listening to live continuous coverage of today's horrific attacks of terror on both New York City and the Pentagon building in Washington, D.C. 1010 winds with shadow traffic and transit on the ones keeping you up to date on the situation with Jude Tamillo. Susan the Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Williamsburg bridges and also the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel still closed in both directions. We are open both ways on the Throng Neck and the Whitestone Bridges. The Triborough Bridge is still closed into Manhattan, and we have closures of both the Midtown Tunnel and the 59th Street Bridge coming back into Manhattan, but all traffic is open coming back into Queens. On the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, we're closed both ways between the Battery Tunnel and the Long Island Expressway coming over from Nassau County into Queens. You may not use the Long Island Expressway that is still closed westbound from the Douglaston Parkway out to the Midtown tunnel. All lanes are open, though, on the northern and southern state parkways. In New Jersey, eastbound Route 4 still closed in Englewood. Eastbound 46 roped off in the Fort Lee area. And we have northbound 1 and 9 shut down at the Pulaski Skyway. Of the outbound George Washington Bridge, the upper level with three lanes available. Very light traffic at this time watching on the jam cam. The lower deck still closed along with all lanes both ways through the Holland and Lincoln tunnels. Route 3 is still a mess on the westbound side shut down at the Meadowlands Parkway in Secaucus. With an investigation, the eastbound side of 3 shut down at Route 21 Clifton. From the 1010 Winds Transit Desk, New Jersey Transit operating out of Penn Station on a load-and-go basis. Limited path service to New Jersey. Full service, though, both ways on the Long Island Railroad. Metro North operating on a Saturday schedule both ways. And we have all the subway service south of Canal Street shut down. And, of course, national air traffic is suspended until at least 12 noon tomorrow. I'm Jude Tamillo, shadow traffic on 1010 Winds. And lots of important information that you need to know about, including a bunch of phone numbers here. People searching for missing loved ones should call the New York City Bureau of of labs. The number is 212-447-2998. 212-447-2998. The Office of Victims of Crime has set up a toll-free hotline where people can call to find out information about a possible victim. It's a toll-free number, 800-331-0075. Again, 800-331-0075. If you'd like to find out information about where you can go to donate blood, you can call the New York Blood Center, one 800 9 Three, three blood. You also need to know that New York City public schools will be closed tomorrow, as will Catholic schools in the city. However, Schools Chancellor Howard Levy is asking principals, guidance counselors, social workers, psychologists, and crisis teams to report to work tomorrow to prepare plans to respond to today's tragedy. Levy says that the work will include coordinating crisis intervention and to arrange for grief counseling and other support services as well. And the Schools Chancellor is encouraging parents to talk to your children about what happened today and to reassure them that your kids are safe. 1010 Winds reporter Carol Dioria spoke with a teacher from a city school who was faced with that task of explaining 
this whole thing to her young students. For an adult, this terrorist attack can leave you speechless and angry. But imagine if you're a child. Sonia Zwemer is a teacher at St. Ignatius Loyola Elementary School on Park Avenue and 84th Street in Manhattan. And she spent her day trying to explain to the children what happened. They were confused. They didn't really understand what was going on. Um, they were sad for it um, and concerned about people who worked in the building. Um, a lot of them have parents, aunts, uncles, um, just friends, family that work in the building. So they were confused and scared and worried. And she looked absolutely drained from the day as she walked off the Brooklyn Bridge. By the way, City Catholic Schools are closed Wednesday. Carol Diori attends and wins in Brooklyn. Wins news time now, 9.54. President Bush arrived back at the White House at around 7 o'clock this evening. The president was ushered around to various spots in the nation today to ensure his safety. He addressed the nation just after 8.30. He said the images of what happened today have filled us with sadness and anger, but that the terrorists have failed because our country is strong. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature. And we responded with the best of America with the daring of our rescue workers, with the caring of, for strangers and neighbors who came to give blood and help in any way they could. The president said, quote, terrorists can shake the foundation of our buildings, but they cannot shake the foundation of America. He says no one will keep our nation's light from shining. He also said our military is powerful and is prepared, that our first priority is to get help to the injured and to protect our citizens from further attacks. Mayor Giuliani is making a live statement now. Let's join that on 1010 Winds. Uh, we're very grateful for it. And it will be stored in areas and probably over the next two or three days we, we will need it. And uh, we'll do everything we can to support the efforts of the people who are trying to recover people from the, uh, from the debris and the horror that's uh, taking place down there. The number to call if you have uh, questions. I'm not sure we can answer all of your questions, but at least we can try to answer it. Is one two one two five six zero two seven three zero. That's one two one two five six zero two seven three zero. If you have questions throughout the night and tomorrow, that's the number to call rather than 911, which you should just call if, if there is an emergency. We had over 1,100 emergency room visits today that we know of. Uh, so, so far, we have six fatalities that we know of, five at St. Vincent's. Uh, obviously and tragically, there are going to be a lot more than that, but that's, that's what we know of at this point. Uh, we had over 300 patients that were treated at St. Vincent's, over 160 at Bellevue, 250 at Beekman Downtown Hospital. And the hospital, of, these hospitals were probably the ones under the most stress, but they were able to get through. Uh, I want to thank all the people that helped uh, St. Vincent's getting the, uh, the water that they needed and the support that they needed. Uh, also, I would, I'd like to say to uh, people that, that might consider doing this that uh, services should be made available in New York City tomorrow on a fair and equitable basis. Anybody that thinks that they're going to uh, gouge consumers or uh, ask for extra amounts of money for food or anything else, we're going to have the police and the Consumer Affairs Department out there. Uh, so just be careful. This is a time in which we all have to cooperate and help each other. Alternate side street parking is uh, suspended. Sanitation services will take place in most of the city, except obviously in the lower part of Manhattan, where the sanitation department will be working to remove uh, debris, which has already started. And uh, the schools, again, will be closed tomorrow. And hopefully we'll get them open as soon as possible. Tomorrow the effort will be at trying to recover as many people as possible and trying to clean up uh, the horrible mess that was created by all of this. And I would ask people to cooperate as much as possible in that effort. If you have to come into Manhattan because your business is essential, then obviously do it. The upper part of Manhattan will be open. But if tomorrow is a day in which you want to stay home and stay with your family and uh, give comfort and support maybe to other people that have been affected by this, it would, it would be a good day to do that. Yeah, I, I, the point that Richie Shearer makes is we, uh, 
the, the people are wonderful, and, and, we, and I mean this in the best sense of the word. We've had thousands and thousands of people that have come to help us. When I was down at the site near the World Trade Center, I met uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the National Guards people that the governor has sent, uh, really wonderful young men and women. Uh, we have enough volunteers now. You know, we have m more volunteers, frankly, than, than we need at this point. And what we need to do is to focus the efforts of the professionals that are there, being able to do the recovery and try to save as many lives as we can and restore services as quickly as possible. We, we may be asking for more volunteers tomorrow and the next day and the day after. But right now, we don't need any any more volunteers. Mr. Mayor, is there still hope that there are people who are yes. still alive and well? Yes, there's hope. There's hope that there are there, there there will be there are people that are still that are that, that are still alive. How and is the rescue effort hampered by the darkness? What do you what do you do? We we moved we um, we moved a lot of lights in uh, so that the area is being lit now. So that I don't I don't think the rescue effort is is going to be hampered by the darkness. The rescue effort is hampered by the fact that there's still fire there. There are still still unsound structures. And it's still dangerous, although the rescue effort is now taking place. But if you're asking me, is it hampered? It's hampered because of the conditions, not because of the, of the nighttime. Can you, 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 you,